Hey, what's up? Today is part two of my interview series with Leanne Pruett as part of the HR Space Summit, Clear Your Physical and Mental Clutter to Transform Your Life. If you like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and of course share your thoughts on these topics in the comment section down below. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I'll see you again Saturday. your spacers welcome to my um, part two of our interview with Vera of simple happy Zen I'm so excited that you've joined us again and Vera welcome back to part two thank you so much um, yeah yesterday we talked a little bit about how you got started on your minimalism and mindfulness journey um, how you started um, simple happy Zen and kind of what you know what ace your space meant to you um, today, I want to talk about, um, well, I want to delve a little bit into some of the offerings that you have on your YouTube channel, but I also want to talk a little bit about when people want to start on a minimalist journey or even a journey, any kind of transformational journey from, you know, disorganization to organization, what kind of, you know, tips you might have for them or pitfalls. So why don't we start there? When when you started out or when you see people start out on a journey like this, what kind of pitfalls um, might they run into? Well, the number one thing, I guess, is what I see happening when people start to change from, a, you know, materialist lifestyle into a minimalist lifestyle uh, by keeping the same thought patterns. So uh, wanting to do it all at once, wanting to do it perfectly, wanting to do it the way that it looks in magazines or the way it looks on YouTube when people have really, really beautiful homes and they want to do it perfectly and kind of like ace uh, the whole transition. And in that process, they might start to kind of lose track of themselves. So I see people decluttering almost everything that they own. And of course, if that makes you feel happy, then you should go for it. But I'm kind of more of a practical minimalist myself. So I'm always asking, like, what does, what do I need? What does my personality need? What, what makes me feel happy and safe and, you know, healthy? And uh, what kind of things make my life simpler? Whereas if I were to declutter it because of minimalism, would it actually make my life harder? Um, for example, if, if people like declutter their underwear and they only keep like two or three pairs and you have to wash them every other day it doesn't really make it simpler in my opinion so my this advice would be to always stay true to yourself and uh, not do it in the way that you think you should do it or people expect you to do it but in a way that suits you and i think i also i think another thing what you said was key is like maybe do do a, do a bit and then take a take a second to pause or even a little time to pause and think about how this is working with you if this is the direction and you know kind of live with that bit and go then go to the next yeah there's always time to do you know you don't have to do it all at once i, I it took me a lot of time to go through my entire house i didn't do it in a week or a month so there's always time if I'm, I'm also a big fan of the maybe pile <laughs> because I think it can really help you to set your mind at ease a bit and feel relaxed about letting things go. So yeah, there's always time to do things. Just do them your own way. Yeah. Gotcha. And well, now you know, what, what, what I also you, see oh. happening a lot is with minimalism, people getting kind of uh, overwhelmed and kind of scared of it. And people saying like, oh, but I really love my books. Would that mean that I have to give up my books? And I'm like, no, if you love your books, you have to keep them. Right. <laughs> it's okay, you can keep the things you love. Exactly. Um, and I think that brings a good point that there isn't just one definition of minimalism. Right. Or one definition of having a decluttered space. It's, it's whatever works for you. Yeah. I agree. So, and that, so now that, that brings up a question to me. What is, what does minimalism mean to you? 
in your, you know, for you? For me, it really means letting go of all excess things that don't, um, how do you say that? Everything that doesn't suit you anymore or that doesn't help you or is not really adding value to your life. Mm -hmm. And by getting rid of all the burden and the stress and the clutter and the extras, it really helps you to focus on the things that do matter and that you do feel good with and content with. And um, it makes your life a lot simpler in every kind of aspect you can imagine. And it's a lot more stress-free, therefore. Perfect. So it's not about getting rid of as many things as possible. It's more about get, having not too little and not too much, just the right, the right balance. Exactly. Just what really serves you. What really serves you. Yeah, that was the word I was looking yeah. for. <laughs> what really <laughs> serves you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Now, I want to talk a little bit about, I was looking at your YouTube channel and I see you have some wonderful videos on, of course, just ge general mindfulness, simple living, and happiness. Um, you also have several, some, several guided meditations. And I also saw you had a series of seven days of Zen, like a little video series there. Tell me a little bit about what, what is that seven days of Zen? And when people do that, what, 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 what will they get? Or what, what's available to them from that? Yeah. Well, seven days of Zen uh, are seven videos, and you can do one video a day. So in seven days, you will have uh, meditated every day for seven days. And the videos start at day one with one minute of meditation, and they end with seven minutes at day seven. So it is for those who want to practice or start getting into that meditation, but find it kind of overwhelming to sit down for half an hour uh, because I feel like having a regular meditation practice is much more important than doing it for very long periods of time. And I believe that even if you just sit down and be with yourself and your breath in a conscious way, even if you only do it for one minute, it makes a huge difference. So that was kind of what I wanted to help people with, with that series. It's very easy. Everyone can do it. If you have you know, one to seven minutes in your day, then you can do this video. So, so if people were looking at, sir, if people were on your YouTube channel and they just really wanted to start a meditation practice, they would start with the um, seven days of Zen series, and then they could go on to some of your guided meditations after that for, for maybe, are those a little longer? Yeah, they're a little bit longer around maybe seven to 12, 13 minutes. So they're still pretty short. Um, but yeah, if you find some of the other ones that appeals to you, then go with that one. Always follow your gut, that's what I say. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the, the, the seven ones of Zen are really, really short. So those are the, the best for beginners maybe. Gotcha. Well now, um, when, do you, when do you meditate and how long do you usually meditate? What does your practice look like? Uh, well, I meditate every day, but the way I meditate can be different. So some days I can uh, sit in formal meditation pose for around 10 minutes and other days I do it a bit longer. Uh, I also use guided meditation sometimes, um, but I also practice informal meditation when I don't really feel like sitting down. I don't force myself to do it anyway. I kind of like apply a little bit of mindfulness to the things I'm doing in the moment. So for example, I love to do that when I'm cooking, uh, be really mindful of, you know, cutting up all the veggies or um, when I'm walking outside, really enjoying the sun or something like that. We call that informal meditation. And it just means that you're, you know, applying light awareness to whatever it is you're doing instead of just stuck in your head and, going through all the thoughts and, uh, you know, the thought world, <laughs> letting it take you somewhere else, just being in the moment. And I, I do that every day is different. I just go with what I'm feeling and what I'm kind of craving at the time. Do you try and do something in the morning or do you just, or, or do you have a set time? I don't have a set time. I just do it when I have time <laughs> and when I, I feel like it. So. I love to do it in the morning, just when I wake up, uh, when I'm still lying in bed. 
but I also like to do it in the evening or after coming home from a long day. You know, it can be anywhere, anytime for me. But I've been doing it for a long time, so it feels really natural. Um, but I think that's neat the way you describe it. Um, it's like it, can, it, it, it really is available to you anytime you, you feel the need that you need to do it. So, or need to bring some, some, bring yourself some calm and some peaceful, happy zen to your life. Right. Yeah. Even if you're just waiting for the bus, you know, you can just focus on your breath and you're already meditating when you do that. So you can really do it anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Now, um, so going back, I want to go back to, we talked a little bit about the pitfalls of when people start out on a transformational journey. What kind of tips would you have for people that want to start out to really um, ace their space, we'll say? Right. Um, well, I guess it's, it can be important and a good tip to think about things a little bit first and write down your reasons for wanting to go to a a minimalist lifestyle because it can get really overwhelming at times. It can get challenging. You might lose motivation. You know, you don't know what's going to happen in your journey. And if you have thought about it a bit before, maybe even writing things down, you always have that, that thing you can return to like, oh yeah, that was why I wanted to declutter or that was, that was the feeling I had at the time. And it's a great way to, to keep yourself yeah, motivated, positive, even during the more challenging times that may come or may not come. But having your reasons like listed out for you as a reminder has been a big help for me. Perfect. I love that. That's really great. Um, so we've been, we've been talking now for about 10 or 12 minutes. So um, I want to wrap up part two. Um, but I do want to ask you, well, first of all, I want to say, I want to tell everybody that um, they, they can find you, they can Google Simple Happy Zen or simplehappyzen.com is where your, um, your blog is. And it's a really lovely blog. I love the, 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 um, the graphics and the pictures and stuff you have on there. So everybody go, go check her out there or Google Simple Happy Zen. Um, but I want to ask, do you have any final thoughts for the audience today? Yeah, you know, a lot of people are telling you maybe a lot of things, you know, you've heard a lot of uh, expert speakers, you may have heard more interviews, people giving you tips, and that is all great for inspiration and maybe something clicks with you. But my tip would be to always remain true to yourself and, you know, pick the ones that, that apply to you and then leave the rest. You don't have to do it everything. You can do it your way and you're allowed to go at it in a way that suits you. I love that. That's perfect. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Vera. I have really enjoyed talking to you today. And I know that the audience is really going to enjoy these two, um, you know, part one and part two of our interview series. I hope so. And uh, if everyone wants to come take a look, you're highly welcome. Yes, please do go take a look at, at her stuff. It's great. And Ace Your Spacers, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Keep looking on your Facebook channel for some more surprises. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.